हेलो डियर फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू शिक्षा मंत्र एंड हियर इन शिक्षा मंत्र टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस समथिंग दैट्स वेरी मच एसेंशियल फॉर यू टू लर्न एज अ सीरियस स्टूडेंट ऑफ इंग्लिश ग्रामर यू मस्ट लर्न पार्ट्स ऑफ स्पीच आई हैव फॉर सेवरल टाइम्स इन माय व्लॉग्स रिपीटेड दिस फैक्ट if you are a serious student of english grammar learning parts of speech properly is a must but how and what components are to be learned here in parts of speech that's a very very important factor and most of the time i have found my students they don't know what to learn and how to learn so to present a very clear idea of what to learn of parts of speech and what are the most important components of parts of speech that as a student you must learn just follow this video till the end and you'll get everything about what i'm going to say here and obviously they would be much helpful for you as well so let's begin here we are and uh, we we'll discuss what we are going to learn yes dear friends we are going to learn noun position in a sentence it's very much essential you know what noun is but you must learn how to use a noun and where to use a noun in a sentence so here we are going to understand how a noun function in a sentence actually learning this would understand how to use them in a sentence so first their function is important and following their function would get the position a noun is used in a sentence so let's see what's waiting for us in this discussion so here we'd conclude that would learn the usage of noun first our focus would be on the usage of the noun and we'd find out the noun position so noun position based on usage of nouns that would be our goal why you must learn why to do this without learning why to do this you won't find interest in learning these things the majority of noun errors are caused by the incorrect positioning of nouns in a sentence what influences the position of nouns their position changes based on the function the noun takes in a sentence so here we would find out the first of them yes dear friends it's subject of a verb it's very simple you know it quite well only i have to make them vivid i have to put them in a series so that you can get the proper position of nouns and you can find them out easily when i am considering of noun you must remember that it's not all about noun it's also about pronoun i'll get to that detail at the end but here when we get subject of a verb the noun actually is followed by a verb a verb follows the noun and the noun governs the sentence and here we get the noun as the subject of a verb and here's an example for you the learning center provides free tutoring so the learning center this is the name of a particular coaching center you may consider it so this learning center this is what this is a proper noun and it accepts the verb provides so the verb provides it's following the noun the learning center and the learning center works as what as the subject of a verb here in this sentence and there comes the second one the learning center is inside the library now you may ask me sir why are you using the same noun twice as the subject of a verb 
here my goal is to provide you to show you how it gets conjugated it doesn't matter whether it's a do verb or it's a we verb it is conjugated all alike just as we do it for the do verbs the same thing can be done for the be verbs as well so this is the first rule subject of a verb then comes the second rules it's indirect object of a verb yes dear friends it's very much essential to learn the object of a verb to learn english grammar properly and indirect object that's a component of object so this is a noun that precedes a direct object it can be found by asking who or what received the direct object so how it is i will show you in a very simple form with some examples the first one we can give him a card we can give him a card so give whom him so when we ask him when we ask the verb with whom who or what we get the answer and this is the indirect object and here in indirect object we can place either a noun or a pronoun and give what a card so a card this is the direct object i'm coming to that point in the direct object later in the next point but here to learn that an indirect object of a word can also be a noun here john sent his friend and envelope his friend so sent whom his friend so this is also an indirect object of a verb where a noun is used but if you very keenly observe this you would get that this is not a noun only rather it's a noun phrase so such combinations of words which forms a phrase can also be possible they can also be used as indirect object of a verb so here comes our second rule the direct object of a verb so when we have learned the indirect object of a verb here it is the direct object of a verb that also uh, a noun can uh, be used as the direct object of a verb so that uh, obviously it's for transitive verb and uh, the noun would there receive the action of the transitive verb as we have already discussed it in our discussion of verbs so john drank a glass of milk john drank what a glass of milk so this is the transitive object sorry this is the transitive verb drank which accepts a, an object and this is the direct object because we get the answer by asking the verb with what so john's room has a musky scent has what a musky scent so here also we have found that a noun can be used as the direct object of a verb so here comes our next rules object of proposition and in the fourth rules would learn how a noun can be used as the object of a proposition why because it's very simple a noun follows a proposition and it's used as its object so here's the example john drank a glass of milk john drank what a glass of of what of milk so here milk this noun is used after the proposition so the noun is following the proposition and it's used as the object of a proposition here's another kathy walks at the college at this is the proposition and the proposition is followed by the noun the college so here the college it's actually object of a proposition used it so this is our fourth rules and now would we'll learn the fifth rules predicate nominative yes dear friends here we'll learn about predicate nominative so this is a noun that follows a linking verb that restates or stands for the subject so in these cases would call them predicative nominative obviously we uh, have a detailed discussion on predicate nominative later but here you just remember it's with a linking verb when a linking verb is placed and it restates or stands for the subject we call it predicate nominative and for predicate nominative we use a noun how it is john's sister is the leader of the group so john's sister is 
here is this is a linking verb and the leader here the leader stands for john's sister that's the subject so it's predicate nominative and here a noun leader is used for the predicate nominative there's another example it was an apple so if we consider this an apple was this is the linking verb and an apple apple stands for it the subject so this is also predicate nominative and for predicate nominative we use what we use noun that's all for the fifth and then comes the sixth rules it's appositive yes dear friends for apposition that is uh, when a noun that is located directly after the noun it identifies we consider it as appositives there's an example kathy john's sister is 10 years old so john's sister it uh, stands just after kathy identifying who is kathy so it's a positive and for a positive we use what we use a noun there comes another john is finishing his business assignment a group project so what's his business assignment it's a group project so it actually identifies the business assignment the noun uh, immediately placed before it so it's an appositive and for an appositive we always use what we always use yes dear friends a noun so these are the six different position that a noun or a pronoun may occur in a sentence so you have to learn the uses of the parts of speech it's very important we learn parts of speech we learn their definition but most of the time we forget to learn what they actually mean we forget to learn how they are used we forget to learn the practical uses of the things that we have to learn so here just remember one simple rule you have to learn the position of different parts of speech in a sentence where you would find them and where you will place them and with this simple trick your learning of english grammar would be concretized yes dear friends your knowledge must be concretized you have to learn in such a way that your learning gets concrete you won't make any loose ends hang around so that you can find it very much difficult to put your answer for your grammar questions yes dear friends the other point that we have already hinted in the very beginning that we will discuss about what we we'll discuss about how helpful it would be the position of nouns in other chapters yes dear friends when you have learned position of nouns you'd find them again in your learning of noun phrases and noun clauses what's there in noun phrases and noun clauses nothing but only the position of nouns in a sentence so when you have learned properly the position of nouns in a sentence in your learning of nouns as parts of speech you are going to find it out very easy to learn the phrases and the clauses because you'd find everything there whatever you have learned yet so remember this learn them well learn and have fun happy new year happy 2021 this is the first vlog of my of the year and obviously if you have found it helpful it demands a subscription yes dear friend subscribe if you have come here if you have visited my channel for the very first time with the bell icon for notifications and if you are already in my subscription obviously i would ask you to share this video so that your friends and family would know how to learn english grammar and what are the tricks after it so that's all that's all from this vlog would meet soon with another one stay tuned stay glued to this channel stay happy happy new year